Like, think about Beyonce is going to be able to release her song. She's going to be able to put it into a hundred different languages. And then that will also, the music video she creates for that will now be performing it with the same lip movements to match what she is singing in those different languages. What we did is we started cloning pop singers' vocals. We like cloned Justin Bieber, blah, blah, blah. And we started showing it to people. We showed it to Diplo. And Diplo was like, oh, I have all these pop songs I have to pitch to Justin Bieber. Can I just put the Justin Bieber vocal clone on top of all of these uh, studio singers? The following is a podcast episode with the one and only Flostradamus, who is an EDM artist who is super hyped on AI music. And so he runs a company, it is called Ruben, and Ruben created a tool, it's called Replay. It's a free AI tool where you can swap voices onto any songs. You can create a song on Suno AI, which we're gonna be talking about, which is the best AI music platform, and you can swap the voices on there with his tool called Replay. I could throw Peter Griffin's voice onto an AI-generated song, and these AI-generated songs are getting so good, and we're going to talk about that in this episode. We're also going to talk about video generation. We're also going to talk about vocal cloning. We're going to discuss a universal vocal remover. We're going to talk about overall information management systems. We get kind of nerdy. He tells me about one of his workflows where he uses his phone to talk to ChatGPT and it automatically creates calendar events for him. And I thought that was super interesting. Anyway, I think you guys are really going to like this episode if you enjoy it. Hit subscribe, hit the like button. Anyway, let's dive into the podcast. We are here with Flostradamus. This is a podcast. Yeah, we're talking about AI. This is a podcast. So much cool shit going on. This is a podcast. This song is even made with AI. Have you seen the new emo tool that came out, the lip sync model that came out this morning? No, no, I missed it. I never knew you were the someone waiting for me. So there's one singular reference image, and then it's automatically turned into this video. This is the best lip sync model I've seen. We were just kids when we fell in love, not knowing what it was. I will not give. And so, obviously, that has huge implications for you. Wow. That's amazing. (laughs) I love it. I love it because you're a musician. Like, you can actually use this stuff. Like, in two years now, what do you think music videos look like? Like, I mean, in in two months, bro. Like, okay, no, seriously. Like, it's the, it's funny with all of this stuff, like, with the audio generation now, with, there could be audio generation with lyrics right now. Then if you just can put that on top of just a photo or an AI generated model, you can have a full pop star, a full AI generated pop star. So it's going to be crazy. Like it's, it's not going to be the eight fingers stable diffusion music videos that are happening right now. It's going to be like full on performance videos. Right. Because like the, the way that I see it, it's like if you master the lip sync model and you look at what Sora did, like you can create anything. What's so cool to me is I'm super into the non photorealistic styles. Like I love like the claymation, the anime style, just like kind of that cartoon vibe. I think they go super viral on social media and it's just, it's cool as hell. If you add lip movement to that, the whole game changes because people have been like creating on runway, been creating like movies sort of, but they're still weird and static and boring. There's no dialogue between the characters, but with lip sync like you can just create dialogue between any character and this is uh, thinking even a little more broad with this too like there's there's real-time translation of music as well which is something we do but i'll I'll get into that later but like think about beyonce is going to be able to release her song she's going to be able to put it into 100 different languages and then that will also the music video she creates for that will now be performing it with the same lip movements to match what she is singing in those different languages so she'll be able to actually have like a, a global hit, multiple languages with the music video that matches that too. What I'm always wondering is like, a lot of this tech is out here sometimes in the shadows. Like the Everybody Dance Now was a was like a, a paper that was from 2018, I think. And it was a thing to do from a still image. You could actually make a still image dance, but it's uh-huh. just sitting on GitHub in the shadows for years. 
And then someone reiterated that and they made a, I forgot what it was called, but there's a new type of technology. I think it's, is it animate anything? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah anything. So it was a version of the everybody dance, nothing, but that was made in 2018. So I'm wondering how many of these things either are unreleased like the Sora's or are sitting just on a GitHub somewhere that are just sleepy that could get turned into something new. Uh, I think it has to do with, I call them clicking moments for people where like there's actually like collective clicking moments. GPT-3 was available to use within the OpenAI playground and it was only like a niche specific type of person who would use it. And then ChatGPT came out and made it this approachable platform. And then like everyone clicked, they're like, oh, that's how that technology can be used easily. And so that's, I think a lot of it's design. And so like with Animate Anything, maybe not, you don't want to seek it out on your computer, but maybe if you add it directly on the mid-journey phone app in six months, you can just press one button and then it automatically animates. Now everyone's using that technology. And so I think, yeah, I think now with AI image generation, I think it's way more useful now because you can now create any character and you can make anything dance or move in any way that you want. You can add lip sync and then you can use Suno to create music, which is just crazy. And, and that's the one thing I've always loved about your videos is you show the community these these harder steps. Uh, like you're like, okay, well, like let's take, I don't know, for instance, when the thing you did with Suno and in my app replay, like you like you meshed it together in a way that like, yeah, there's these six different tools and this is how you can do it. And I always love mm -hmm. that with all of your workflows and all the videos you show, you're like, how can we take all of the, the, these things and put it together? You show the community this, and then funny thing is in six months, three months, whatever, some other company does that. They make that one package together thing. Companies will reach out to me or people, investors will reach out to me like, hey, like we can build this. Like, do you want to help me build it? I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, like I will happily advise companies. I will participate. Like if, if I see that it could be like, if I think it's going to be an awesome tool, I'll talk about it. I'll make pro promotional deals. And that's one of the reasons why I started this community is I want to bring some of those promotions to benefit the entire community, which is I think a business model that's going to really, really blow up in the future. But ultimately, like, I don't want to get tied down to any one specific technology. I, that's the last thing I want to do is talk. I want to use only the best tools on the market. And that's what's most fun for me because I can then create these complex workflows and then people know that every time they watch my video, he's using the best possible tool for that use case or blend of tools. And so yeah. that's where all the creativity is. Yeah. I think as soon as it gets bundled up into one tool, that's when it becomes easy and therefore like way less valuable if you're trying to get attention or make really good art. I, I don't know. What, what do you think about that perspective? A thousand, thousand percent, man. And I, I think that that's when people say like, oh, well, AI will never be creative and all these things that there's so many things that people say around it, but like, or it's stealing creativity or it's stealing jobs in this. I, I honestly think that it's just the, the way we tell stories and the way that we create with these tools is going to be what's will change and how we can actually succeed in this space. How can we be creative with these tools and do next level things with them? And like, I, I'm doing that with Suno in ways that, that like, yeah, you could go in and prompt in, I want a song of my dog, or you could use it to create samples for a genre and then resample that, and which I can explain more, but. Yeah, I, if you can go to a text prompt and type something in, and then get it back. Like if that is the center of whatever you're doing, like anyone can do that. There's no barrier to entry. And so like, that's why like I always used early videos on TikTok for me. I had the guy named Steve. I don't know if you remember him. He was a Synthesia avatar. And so he's this old guy. And whenever I didn't explain something fully, he would, the video would stop and he would immediately start talking over the video. And so I used AI as an accent over my videos to help explain something. If I missed it, add extra flair. But and the way the technology is being built so fast like this is Zapier, of course, is the current solution to these things, like to do the if this, then that steps. But like very soon, the next GPTs or whatever it will be, it's going to help us mesh this together. So Riley, you might have an idea. Oh, what about this one GitHub I found and this other hugging face I found in Kyber or whatever with the next iterations of these like uh, GPTs or whatever, we'll, you'll be able to like make this idea into a product. I think it's going to get easier and easier and easier to combine all of these things. Mm -hmm. and, cable them together. One last thing I'll say on this is, I don't know if you've ever used Paperspace. Have you ever used that? Type? I've never used it. Don't know what that is. So Paperspace is pretty much like a Google Collab uh, type environment that you can run like GitHub, things like that. But they have a feature in Paperspace that you can actually, with cables, connect multiple GitHubs together. So it's kind of like, um, what's the- Com Comfy UI? It's is like that... Comfy UI, okay. but, it's, but it's for deeper than like, uh, it's for any GitHub. So you could even like, you could hit render and it can run through six different GitHub pages and then you can have a final product 
the way that it patches together. It's pretty crazy. So, that is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's it called? It's called Paper Space? Yeah, Paper Space is dope. It's like, uh, even if you just want to like do really high compute stuff, they have really good GPUs and stuff on the cloud to use. But yeah, well, I, I, I was going to say with all of this, the reason you brought all this up and, and for like, I, I think a lot of people is like the light bulb needed electricity to be invented. Like someone couldn't just like invent a light bulb. You needed like the at the invent or advent of electricity. And then the light bulb came along because of that. And I think that that's what we constantly are seeing in this era, but just at light speed, literally, like something new will come out and then someone's going to make a thing to like match that. And then it's just going to keep iterating faster and faster. Yeah, because you can always do add-ons. And so yeah. it's like the, the little add-ons, like, I mean, once the car was invented, think about all the inventions that came to add on to the car, right? And so like, what is the car now? Like the problem is that there's a thousand different cars going in different directions and people are like, where the fuck do I put my attention? Because back when there was a car, it was just, that was the invention of the decade. It was a car. But now, like, it just seems like we're finally hitting an acceleration point with technology, which is fun. Because I, I personally don't think technology has been, I don't think it's gone through any useful upgrades since I've been a lot. Like, besides, like, the internet getting faster and, like, phones, which are arguably, like, not even that good for us. Like, I, I don't, I haven't been excited for a new technology besides AI. I don't know, maybe that's cynicism, but, like, I don't know. I'm just, like, finally inspired by all these different directions that we can go with it i don't know what do you think about that yeah so i i, I i'm always just open to any new technology whatever it is like i think that I, i'm trying to stay optimistic as much as possible with any new technology and like any technology like let's say you split an atom you can power millions or you can kill millions with splitting an atom but i try to stay the power millions uh yeah. with it but i love seeing all of what's new with technology and especially as a creative like all of these new tools just like help expand my creativity more and more and more. It's like these things, these doors keep opening up and I can just keep doing other things like I never thought I would do video editing or, or image generation, et cetera, et cetera. It's really cool. Yeah. And I guess, I guess I haven't been a creator or a creative. If you want to call me that, I, you know, I make content on the internet and I haven't always been doing, I've only been doing it for 18 months now. Like I started it, like once I first saw AI, I was like, okay, this is going to be the biggest thing we've ever seen in our life. I want to just, I'm going to make content on it. That was kind of the decision that I made. And like, I think that my perspective has shifted more optimistic since I started creating. Like, I think, I think it's like something that I really needed in my life was to like create stuff and put it out there and interact with people. Like creating is a very fun thing to do. Um, and Dude, AI has made it easier. You are a creative though, man. That's the thing. I, I like the way that you found find ways to match things together. Let's you, you look at this as in a creative, like you said, I, you don't want to call yourself a creator. Like you are man. Like, well, it, yeah, it, yeah, whatever it means, like label, like I, I I'm okay with like, I don't even think about labels. Like I'm just yeah. like, I'm out here. I, I I'm, I'm a very curious person. I am a curious yeah. person. And I just love to just like, whenever I have something that like fascinates me, like I dive as deep as I can down that rabbit hole and whether it takes years, I never know when I first go in, this one might be decades, but, um, yeah, it's fun. Okay. I, I want to really quickly reset the yeah. room here. If you're watching, most of you are probably watching the replay of this live right now. And whether you're watching live or watching the replay, leave comments below and ask questions. I'll shoot them over to uh, to Kurt later and we can just keep a running uh, running answers to these questions. We're here with Flostradamus, a.k.a. Kurt, is it Camarucci? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I DJ under the name Flostradamus. Uh, been doing that for 18 years. Uh, but the funny thing is, before that, that career, I was in tech. I actually have a coding degree. I was working in the more in like the creative design side of tech. I was coding with PHP, SQL, HTML, and Macromedia Flash, like all of that. So I've been in tech my whole career. And uh, but yeah, the, I guess what I'm famously known for is this EDM DJ stuff. Been doing that for 18 years. Headline Lollapalooza, Coachella, all of these festivals. And I've just been super into tech. And like Riley was saying a minute ago, this whole invention of AI has just expanded my mind so much more. And it's making me become a better creator, but also tr I'm trying to find ways to solve problems in this space. Been finding a lot of things that need to be handled in this space. I started this company called Ruben. It's an AI music company, which I'll talk about more. And yeah, that's my little elevator pitch on who I am. Yeah, so you, wait, so you started Ruben. Um, yes. I know you've st you said you own Replay. Are those related or... Yeah, yeah tell me about Ruben, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So 
Ruben uh, was started in 2022. Uh, and what that was initially is I, like I've been talking earlier in this chat, like I just like, I'm always digging on GitHub. I'm always digging in different forums and different things. But I found on a random 4chan board, there was, oh, there was a My Little Pony community. And what they were doing was cloning voices of My Little Pony, the cartoon, and they just wanted to be able to like recreate this cartoon. And so they were using this one GitHub called Diff Singer. It was just like a random like thing you could do vocal cloning with. It was really hard to use. You had to do all this like crazy code and chop up samples. But I initially started Ruben with that. And what we did is we started cloning pop singers' vocals. We like cloned Justin Bieber, blah, blah, blah. And we started showing it to people. We showed it to Diplo. And Diplo was like, oh, I have all these pop songs I have to pitch to Justin Bieber. Can I just put the Justin Bieber vocal clone on top of all of these uh, studio singers? So what we did is we took the five songs that he had for Bieber, put Bieber's voice on it, and he pitched Bieber's team with Bieber's voice. And everyone was, their mind was blown in 2022. They're like, how, how are you doing this? And the thing is that they only took like one or two of those songs. But now we have three extra songs that we can put Ariana Grande's voice on and pitch Ariana Grande's team those same songs because Bieber's team didn't take it. So that was kind of like the early invention of Ruben. And then we're like, what else can we do with this? So we took some of the Major Lazer, which is Diplo's other group. We took some of their songs and we cloned the voices on those songs. And then we converted those songs into Mandarin, into Spanish, and to all these different languages. And so now we made these songs global hits. They're now... They're already global hits, but in English, but now they're native language global hits, which is kind of another thing that we were doing with Ruben. And then talking about solutions and how to solve a lot of things, I noticed a lot of people that were trying to get into the vocal cloning at a lot of my fellow DJ friends and stuff. I was like showing them paper spaces. I was showing them uh, hugging faces and GitHubs and things like that on how to vocal clone, but no one wanted to do this. And that's kind of what we were talking about earlier, Riley. It's like, it's hard to do this stuff. Early tech adaption, there's a lot of like barriers to entry. So I wanted to make a one-click solution on how to do this. I wanted to make an app to give to my DJ friends so they could clone voices. And that's what we invented Replay. So that was like the first problem we solved. You can upload your vocals or uh you can upload a song right you can upload a song and it will split the the words and it will also split the track or the what are those called the the uh yeah whatever. Yeah, yeah 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 it'll yeah. split those and then it'll change the voice and so weights.gg is where you can download ai models uh for voices so you could download peter griffin or you could download you know uh rihanna and that's how i created there was a video that i made and the video you're referring to where i meshed those six tools together suno ai is just text to song i can't believe there's text to song that's just crazy. Yeah. It's text to song with some music and lyrics. And then I took the song, which onto replay, which is tryreplay.io, split it into the track and the vocals. And then I changed the vocals to Nicki Minaj. And then I went to Synthesia and took the raw vocals, put it into Synthesia. And then I found someone that looked like Nicki Minaj because you can't just create a model of Nicki Minaj. And then I used Face Fusion to put Nicki Minaj's face onto the Synthesia avatar. So like after six layers of AI maneuvering and I used AI to generate the lyrics of the song itself I got Nicki Minaj rapping it and now that I'm saying this out loud I'm realizing it's actually more creative than I thought when I thought it just seems obvious when I'm trying I'm like everyone's going to be doing this yeah. did I get that somewhat right for a try replay yeah you did and, and okay. seriously bro like when you did that like like you had the thing that I love about a lot of your content is like you're putting the things out there that like I've thought about and stuff and like you did all of that in front of me I was like you fucking did it and the thing that was amazing is you use some of the tools that I'm part of, which I was like even more mind blown. I was just so stoked that you took that time. And one thing I do want to say, this has been my whole entire career. It's like the things you put your entire life into. I've had songs where I put 12 months into and I've worked on every little thing or whatever, and that doesn't do well. And the song that I seriously took 20 minutes to do, and I was like, fuck it, I'm throwing it on SoundCloud, is like my biggest songs ever that have defined my career. And it's so weird. The things that we put heart and soul into don't translate as much as just like this like yolo thing you just throw on the internet it's so wild he used the tool that we built called replay and we built that because we just wanted a, a spot so people could just like one click auto generate ai vocals and a lot of the there's a lot of services online you can do ai vocal generation but you have to pay and you're pretty much just paying for compute so what we did is we solved the problem and we're like why don't just run it on your computer use your compute that you have for free and so that's what we made replay for and that's what it is and then weights is our website with all of the ai vocal models we have over 20,000 models on there we have millions of users like uploading them all the time and you can even do the conversion on there now we have it set up so you can even just be on your phone wrapping into your phone or whatever you want and you can convert on your phone 
through the Weights website. We have a bunch of other cool features that we're going to be adding soon. We're even going to add like professional vocal models too. Uh, so you can actually like license a model to the website or use someone's license model, which is kind of cool. And then one last thing I'll get into, and that's kind of how I got into working with Suno is they had a vocal cloning thing back in the day called Bark. And then it evolved into a thing called Chirp. And Chirp is now what Suno is today. And I've just been helping them with that just in advising roles and just trying to get uh, get them to like give them good feedback on how they can develop this like new text to music generation, which would you say they're leading? Would you say they're leading right now in, in text to music generation? Uh, yeah, hundred percent for quality, a thousand percent. Why do you think that is like what what about their team or what about the way that they approach AI music is the reason why they're they're winning the game right now? I think it was I mean, the main thing I think was what you were saying earlier. We, we keep talking about like a lot of this AI tool stuff is so hard to use. You have to like paste it together. And the thing that they did wrong in the first place is they were running it all through Discord like a mid journey. Mm. But everyone wants it is it, it just in their palm of their hand just as easy as possible and i think the people that rise to the top in this space are the ones that fix the path of least resistance they make it so it can go from a thought to creation and they made it so you can just type in a text prompt and it'll create a song on a website or an app as soon as you like just have an idea and instead of going to discords or google collabs and all these things they remove that. And I think that's the main thing for anything. That's what we're trying to do with weights and replay is like, make it just so it's as easy as possible to create with AI. Like when Adobe put AI into their system, I was preaching to all of my designer friends, like early on, yo, you need to get on stable diffusion, get on stable diffusion, install automatic 1111, or then when mid journey came out, blah, 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 like use this because this is the future. None of them wanted to do that. They didn't want to like go through the process of like how you had to, it just was so hard to get there. And then the second it was just in Photoshop, the place where they're creating or premiere or whatever, when it's in the place you're working, it's going to make it so much easier for you to use. And everyone was praising AI. They, they were afraid of it at first. And now they're like, oh my God, I can expand my images. I can make my text go on a t-shirt and illustrator, blah, blah, blah. So like people like Adobe are doing the thing. They're doing it as easy as possible, as seamless as possible and keeping it in the place where people are creating. And they're going to be the ones I think, I think Adobe is probably the company to watch for doing what you're saying. They're going to make everything in one space. It seemed obvious that Google was in the best shape for AI and they've sort of fumbled the bag because of both political reasons, like internal company reasons. I don't know what's going on internally at, at Adobe. From my perspective, I've been really deep into following the founder of Runway and the way that he experienced explains the future of video editing makes a lot of sense to me. I think about Apple all the time, the way that they never cannibalize their products. So if they come out with a new thing, the, the reason why my MacBook doesn't have a touchscreen is they have an iPad. And by creating the touchscreen on the computer, it'll destroy their iPad. The way that the Runway founder talks about video editing itself, he talks about it in a way that like, we're done pushing pixels around. We're going to generate it. So like the entire method of creating content is going to change. Adobe can't build that. By building that, it cannibalizes every product they have. As soon as you kind of, it like one, like an all encompassing app that you don't need After Effects anymore because one app does it. You don't need Premiere Pro because like the differences between, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. I really do feel like Adobe is like, they have all these products. Photoshop is their cash cow. I'm pretty sure that's their highest profit product they have. And I think they're scared shitless of this. I think a lot of creators still want to use the, they still want to create in the world that they like to create in. Like, yeah, they, maybe they want to type a prompt, but I think a lot of people do want to create. The one thing I was going to say though, to what you were saying about the data sets and, and everything is uh, with, well, for one, one with Sora, I think Sora, I saw this video where they were trained on like things that were generated with synthetic data. So they made a bunch of stuff. I don't know if you saw that video, but they made a bunch of things in Unreal Engine. Then they fed those rendered Unreal Engine videos into Sora and trained on synthetic data. So they used, so that's the thing. Elon might have all the videos in the world or whatever, but what if you have infinite amount of image generation using things like Unreal Engine? You can generate five scrillion fucking images now and, and, and all of that synthetic data. And I think that's the next wave of what this is. And that's even with Suno, I think there's a little bit of that. Like you can now train on synthetic data then yeah that's what so it, seems like it literally all comes down to compute if, if the barrier to entry is just synthetic unreal engine data then there is basically no moat 
in turn, like it's only compute, right? And, and so check this out. So currently Unreal Engine runs, uh, this is my thoughts with this. I'm gonna go a little crazy with it, but currently Unreal Engine runs on GPU. So yes, compute, but you can make a limited, you can make X amount of, uh, of compute of GPU rendered compute, let's say today, which you do with Unreal Engine, but then you can also now feedback loop within Stable Diffusion and recreate more synthetic data. So it moves from GPU power to now an AI, a new type of graphics card, and I think that that's what it's going to be. There's going to be a new type of card that is out there, and and I think I, maybe you saw the Sora video with Minecraft. Like currently, mm -hmm. Minecraft runs on GPU, but they showed with Sora that they're able to actually generate without GPU in that sense, quote unquote, rendering with GPU. They're actually just doing diffusion images over and over super fast. So gaming, all of these things are going to actually just be diffusion based. So I think there's going to be a new type of rendering, a new type of AI graphics card is probably for the future. And all of this stuff, gaming, all of these things are going to be all just like a constant image generation with diffusion is my thoughts. Sora was such a earth shattering moment for me when I saw it, where I'm like, oh, like this is going to be, I had already thought we were going to get full movies within either this year or next year. I didn't realize like, we're going to get blockbuster quality films by the end of next year like a real good movie i cannot wait to hear the story about like a uh, seven bored high school students skip school for three weeks to just work on a movie and then they finish it and it's like amazing that's the story i can't wait for it yeah man and it's i said this earlier in our chat but it's i think it's all about the story it's going that's going like the creativity and the story like that's going to mean the most with all of this stuff like mm -hmm. Use these tools however you want and you can be creative with the tools like it's kind of funny we're coming to this new technology at the time where people are just repeating stories over and over again like every movie that came out is just like all right spider-man spider-man Sp whatever it's like these like repeat stories that are happening over and over again someone's going to come out with a whole new like there's going to be new inventions of, of story and new inventions of these things that are aren't being repeated because of this technology. It's not gonna be like money driven like like the blockbuster industry is now. It's like, how can we make millions of dollars on this one thing? It's like, people are gonna create really cool things that are gonna affect culture. Yeah, and then and then when you get a bunch of people creating cool things or productions, that shifts like the center of culture, right? Where the center of culture now is Hollywood. I think Hollywood feels very under pressure that that's leaving. It's kind of moving to Silicon Valley, like like that's where the culture is, or or people Reddit forums, you know, random people. So it's like a great democratization of this like creative power. Imagine just being able to make a movie in your basement, just like to, you grow up with that ability to just immediately. Be become a filmmaker and compete and get into the culture because that's what I think is the hardest part is like Hollywood or a lot of like creative I'm sure music for you it's like it's gated right it's hard to get into the music culture the popular music culture but now it's like anyone can get in anyone like me I can make content on anything in the world on on AI that I think is cool now I have CEOs hitting me up they're like hey let's have a meeting like let's talk let's talk I want to know what you know like people way smarter than me are asking me my opinion and yeah. so it's like this weird game where like I didn't have to go through any formal cultural um, rite of passage. I just did it. And so like, I think it's going to be like that for everything creatively. The act of manifesting is speaking things into existence. Like, oh, I, you know, whatever it is, I want to be a successful, whatever you, you're like speaking into existence, but I've been noticing with these AI tools, they're making it so we can manifest our ideas so much more. Like I have notepads on my phone full of ideas. I've had business ideas, things I want to do products or whatever, but now I can just like manifest those, whether it's a, a business plan. I go to chat GPT. It's a business plan of this little idea I had, or it's a movie script or whatever like you can do all of this you can manifest your ideas now because the barrier of entry like you're saying is getting shorter and shorter and i'm just excited for this era of like manifesting things creativity businesses etc cetera, etc cetera. that's what ai can do i think it takes a specific personality type to do what you're suggesting the people who are willing to manifest immediately there's something about people who just like immediately are willing to just part of manifesting is identity right and i've realized that most people get held up on identity. That is like the main barrier. It has nothing to do with ability. Even your friends who uh, are graphic designers who were resistant to mid-journey. I don't even think it was like the technology being weird. It was like, it was an identity issue, right? They 
saw it and they're like, this isn't what I do. I don't want to have to go into this thing because it's not me. But it's like, you have to just like, as soon as you have an idea, it's so easy to figure out what it takes. And then you're like, okay, it's going to require this, this, and this, and this. Yeah. I can also use AI for this, this, and this. Should I do it? And it's like, you can just hop in. And like, I didn't have any video editing experience before 16 months ago. And like in this process, I've gotten so much better because I've been open to the, these video editing techniques. And I, I think it's just across the board. I think I'm seeing the most successful people in AI, entrepreneurs, and I've met some huge, hugely successful new entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs of old who use AI. All of them have that. They don't have that identity block. They just, they're just willing to just hop in and try it. And I think that's what it requires. Yeah. And you were able to do that. Like you, what you were, you were doing business stuff before this. Or yeah. So I, before? I, was in, I was in the marketing space and I had actually started a business, a reselling business prior and actually sold it to a, this was right out of college. Um, and I sold the reselling business to, um, uh, it was actually a, a book company. I was buying and reselling books out of a warehouse and then kind of just sold all my inventory. And that's a whole separate story. Huh. And then I just got into marketing. Then I ended up falling into a random discord chat and they were talking about mid journey, uh, about, like November of 2022. And that's wow. when it all changed. Well, that that's like you, I don't know, back to like you not saying you're a creative or whatever, but like you had this other identity of who you were before, like this marketing. I mean, you're using marketing what you're doing now, of course. But like that, I think back to you saying this identity thing to support what you're saying is like, maybe that was a thing for you. You weren't, oh, I'm not a creator. I'm not whatever. But you're doing all this creative shit with these tools and your your new identity is this. And I think that that's what these these things are. All of these AI tools are technological tools. It doesn't even have to be AI, just te technological advancements they're making it so our identity can be these things I, I saw someone in the chat say that they were a retired nurse now in ai video production their their identity was this nurse before and now they're doing video production like i think that that's the cool thing all of these tools are coming out so people can actually remove themselves from these old constraints of what the old like capitalism whatever it is and now they can be creatives they can be all of these different things using this technological advancement tools like ai so I think it's beautiful, man. We're in a very, very amazing time. Yeah. And then it's also good not to have like a two, be a too attached to your identity because a lot of the things that work right now are short-term arbitrage. And I've been thinking about this a lot recently about how if I'm ever feel like I'm like in a rush to make a video so that I can go viral, I always like pause. I'm like, okay, am I actually building something that's going to give me like a long, because I feel like I'm starting to now with the community, especially if I were to create a podcast, not be fully reliant on some algorithms. I've seen people like think that they have a multi-million dollar business when they come up with something that goes viral and then a hundred people copy them and it's gone. Yeah. And so like part of your identity needs to like be like constantly reinventing yourself because the risk of it being taken away quickly in this wow. landscape is a lot higher in my opinion. And that's something people should work out, look out for. Dude, I, I do have questions that maybe we can say it on this or at another time, but like I don't do the social media rat race. I'm like, I actually like stepped away from my social media. Like early in my career, I was like, how in the social media, but I don't know, over time I stepped away, but seeing you be part of this like content creation environment, it seems like it would just be, I, I personally would burn out. Cause you have to like keep up with like algorithms and trends and editing and all of these stuff. There are times where it gets really hard and it gets like, I'm working long hours, 17 hours a day, 18 hours a day. And I'm constantly in that battle between like the business side of my brain and the creative side of my brain, because the business side of my brain wants to handle all the operations and say like, okay, well, if all you have to do is film yourself talking about five things a day, send it to someone who then processes it and then they can batch it up and they'll post it on social media for you. Like that's like one extreme. And then the the other extreme is just like waking up and creating whatever my heart wants to go and like so it's like balancing those two the business and the creative side and whenever i go too heavy on either like whenever i shift too far over to creative mode or business mode that's when i start feeling like i'm burnt out like i have to keep both going and so like i found a nice balance right now where like i have a very solid editor i have a good planning structure system on like when i'm doing intake of information because in terms of learning and testing tools, I will never burn out. Like that is so fun to me. Yeah. It's the actually the social media aspects, which is why like the next hire that I have is going to be a social media manager. And I'm going to be limiting my social media consumption down to like 30 minutes a day or less just to engage with people who like my stuff. Other than that, I do think social media is a death trap if you spend a lot of time on it and you're reliant on it for income. 
I definitely I, agree. I could, I could see it. I, I can see the benefits of it too. I mean, we're talking right now because of what you've done on social media. Yep. There's so many benefits of it, but I can well, see I, it. I mean, I mean, how would I not like, like, cause I've been thinking about this. I'm like, oh yeah, I want to be a builder. I want to, I want to build cool things. I could get on a call like 98% of these AI companies that people don't know anything about. I can get on a call with their CEO within a week if I just reach out to them. And so like, how do I not just stay in this position? It's so fun. And so like, that is the aspect that, and I talk to other influencers and other industries that might not be growing and a they're just way not profitable at all to be in certain niches in that case i would burn out immediately but being in ai which is the biggest and fastest growing niche like i think there's something very energizing about it like i feel like we're and it's the coolest technology in my opinion that's ever been created so like to be one of the people who's talking about that actively and gets paid to talk about it i mean that's just fun as hell yeah you're definitely in a position i would like to be in in that sense because i do love the i love it advising on companies. I love helping build things. And I love, like you said, just testing out all these new things. I'm sure from this chat, I'm like talking about GitHub's, hugging faces, all these things. I'm like, I'm in this like 90% of my day is finding new tools to create and all these cool things to test out. Uh, I just wish I could like work. I wish I could turn that into some, some something more income related. Like I love my music career. I love doing that stuff. But like, I personally love to like help build new cool technology to make it so that everyone is using it. Like, like replay and even part of Suno as well. Like, Think about all the people that are now going to be able to create. Like I could, with my music career, I could create one song and affect X amount of people. But what if I help create a tool that the world can use and it's going to, the ripple will be so much more exponential. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that's like the best and, thing I would and, and one thing I've realized a lot about working with people like you who are creating tools, and it's, I love, I, I love working with people who are creating tools because I often act as the bridge between people and the people building tools. And what the people building tools don't fully understand is that a lot of the, where their tool falls short is education. The people who build tools are interacting with people who build tools all day. And they have a level of knowledge that is so much different than the average person who might theoretically use their tools. I genuinely think the content that I make completely pivots people's careers. Yeah. I actually think that. And it affects people's lives and it's valuable, that education aspect. And so like, that's the part, that is what I'm going to spend the next year or two on or, or more is actually like, how do I get better at teaching people so that they take action to like get started with tools? And that's why I wanted to create this community because I actually want to create the, I want to find my favorite tools and let them bring in people in-house to just like give demos for their new product updates. I want to let that culture take place in a community because I think the most valuable places on the internet are going to be communities and people who share a common goal or culture. And as creator, I can create that, you know, like I get to create the lo the mascot and like what the mascot stands for. And so that's actually the one of the next challenges that we're doing in here because um, I'm going to redo like prizes on contests. I'm going to do like a logo for future, uh, future of, which is the name of the group, and then come up with like our guiding principles. And so like, I want to create a content who can use AI and then an AI to come up with like a song that represents the community and all that stuff and create like that real culture. And so that's what I'm excited about is creating culture around these tools to empower tool builders. And so like, that is my biggest passion. And yeah, it seems like we could probably work together on something in that regard. Hey, I'm always down, man, seriously, I'm always down. And, and to, to what you're doing already, you already are empowering, especially me. You've affected me so much, man. I found out so, like your videos might be one of the most bookmarked ones in my in my Instagram let's too. Go, it's like, I, there's a lot of, just there's so many good things that you say all the time. And also the way, even if I do see a tool like on early on or whatever, you do showcase it in a way that it's like, oh, wow, I never thought about it that way, or I can apply it into this thing. So yeah, man, you're, you're definitely highly bookmarked in my IG and you're doing the right thing. You're empowering all of us. Seriously. Well, I, I, I really appreciate it. Like, that's so cool. It's so cool to hear that. Um, maybe I don't give myself enough credit sometimes. Just like, I, I don't know, like, I'm just so focused on the next video. I don't ever like pause and like, okay, like, this is cool what we're building, which yeah, I need yeah. to definitely need to do that more. How do you, do you manage your time? Uh, do you have like an assistant or do you use AI or how do you manage your time effectively? Yeah, I use AI, which is kind okay. of crazy. And, uh, 
Yeah, I do. I use AI to help me with a lot of different things, uh, as well as just in general. Like, I just I kind of focus on the thing that's inspiring me the most, and so that could be making music, or that could be some new weird AI tool or whatever. But I usually try to stay on what's just like the most inspiring at that time. Uh, and the cool thing with AI is, or with any of these tools or whatever, like I'm constantly being inspired. Whether that's coding, because I I do code, and I'll use GPT to code to maybe write some like uh, Apple scripts to run on my computer to help me automate things, or then I'll switch over to Ableton and make some music, or I'll switch over to Photoshop and like do design. So I'm, I'm constantly just like going all over the place, uh, but I'm always just trying to stay inspired. And you're, you're able to like mode switch super easily. Like that's one yeah. thing that gets me is the mode switching, like switching from like research into content creation, like going back to forth, back and forth too much can like really overwhelm me, uh, which is one thing that I really, which is why I'm trying to like centralize all my information so that I don't have to move to all these different platforms, which is why I think automation is so cool is to like be able to do email in full, but never even go to an email platform. You can just like, you can speak to it. There's all different types of way you can interact with these productivity tools that are really, really inspiring. But yeah. what, what's, yeah. no, go ahead. Brad. I was just going to say, there's going to be uh, the way that these things are going. It's like, yeah, you're using Zapier and stuff right now, but very soon it's going to understand us. Like one thing I've been doing since early GPT is just constantly feeding it things, like feeding it text messages with people that I've had like disagreements with and trying to understand my perspective and their perspective. Using AI is almost like a therapist, but the what, what I think it'll be able to do, especially with like Google getting in this, is it's going to understand all of our emails we've ever sent, our text messages, our voice messages, and I personally am leaning into that. I know a lot of people have privacy rights and stuff, but the more it understands who I am, the more it's going to make me efficient. And I'm going to hopefully learn and lean into these tools where it does understand who I am to the point where it will, it could even answer emails for me and things like that. And then I can just tap in with it and be like, whatever, like, okay, Google, whatever. And oh shit, my, my Google's going to start talking, but, but see, it'll <laughs> It'll give me a wrap of what I have to do in the time or whatever. I can focus on certain things or whatever. Do, like, do you have access to Gemini 1.5 Pro? I signed up to the new one. I don't. Is there a new new one that so, came out? Oh, there's there's Gemini Advanced, which is a thirty thousand context window, and there's Gemini 1.5 Pro, which has a one million context window. Um, you use it in Google Studio. It's not in Gemini yet. Oh. Okay. Um, Okay, so my next YouTube video, I got access a few days ago, and I've been I haven't really talked about it yet because I have a lot of videos I'm doing. Dude, you you are going to love it. So you were just talking about how you can basically feed it as much context on your life. And so anytime I highlight something on Readwise, so if any video I watch, article I watch, or anything that I find interesting, research paper, PDF, anything, you can save it to Readwise and you can annotate and highlight and add notes to it. And what I've done is I've set up an automation so that every time I aud I highlight something, it gets added to a Google Sheet. And I created this four days ago when I knew I was going to get access. And so there was basically, I think it was like 700 or 800 lines of ideas that I've saved. And you're able to ask Gemini Advanced or a Gemini 1.5 Pro, a question about it, it will go through every line, it'll analyze the theme of the things that you've saved, it'll write a video script, and so it can save the link. And so I asked it to generate a video script, and it was like four, it was probably four pages worth of a script. Every single paragraph had a link saying like, and as you can see here in this video, and then it showed the link to the video that I was referring to, and it that was the first time I'm like, oh, this is like a second brain. <laughs> like, and this is, this if based on what you've said, like this will Will blow your mind. Yeah. I really believe that. I love that. And one thing I'll say for you, like I, there's going to be one of the big social media companies is a, seriously going to debut this soon. So for you running your channel, it you'll it's going to automate a lot of these things for you too. Like you'll be able to talk to your fans, to people without even having to talk to them because it's going to understand how you've responded in your DMs and things like that. It's going to actually like I, it's yeah. coming up very soon. So like. Yeah. I, I can imagine. I think people are going to be a little, um, I, I feel like they might be a little disappointed in those types of interactions. Like, I feel like they're going to be able to tell. Oh, of course. It, yeah. It's going to feel cold and things like that too. But I, I guess to what you're saying with like automating a lot of these things, like certain things can get handled in a certain way. Maybe it's like someone sends you an image or whatever you can like double tap, like I don't, certain like interactions that aren't as like introspective. And maybe what it does is it even gives you, I don't know, I've never used it, but maybe it can give you something that's like, okay, this is a substance. You need to communicate to this person right now or whatever. Mm. Like, and, and same with like what's happening with the Gemini stuff. Maybe there's like things where it can showcase why you need to look at this or go here. Oh, or oh so you're, you're asking it, you're saying that you should, ask it to like come up with things that you should do or, or let's say you fed it every 
email chain that you've ever made, it can be like, okay, what person could I reach out to to make my intentions more clear? Or like those types of things. That's fascinating, actually. That's a video idea. I might take that and make a video on that idea because I have access to Gemini. Dude, go, go in it. Show us, show us how to do it. That's really smart. I love just talking to the GPT uh, voice thing. It, it feels like I'm talking to a friend. I can just turn it on in my car and just riff with it. And it can like help me organize my day and things like that. So I yeah. think that's a sign of where this will be. I think us buying another device like an Apple Watch or something, whatever, like, I just don't think it's going to be as popular. It's going to be a cool thing. Maybe be a little bit of a, a statement piece, but I don't think it's like, we have a device right now that we're using for everything. I think that those will still be the main hub for those type of like assistant type things. Yeah, and I, I actually really want to touch on, and Emily's in the chat, she very much like you loves to use chat GBT and AI to like organize thoughts. I think it's organizing your thoughts is, is going to become more and more critical. What I'm excited for is the next layer on top of that, which is not only will it help you organize your thoughts, but it will actually schedule the events for you right then and there on your calendar, which is like, so you're driving in the car, you're having a busy day. And it's just like, okay, these are the things or it's like, what do, what do I have to do today? And it, it can actually go into your email. It can go into your text. And like, it's like, okay, this person said this, this person that said this. And like, once these AI models get faster, imagine it on like three X speed, where it's just like this, 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 and this, you can set your own exact speed. And you're like, okay, I want to do this first. And it will like say, okay, we'll help you prioritize. And it will schedule those three events. And then when you go to your calendar to get ready to work, it'll actually have suggestions on where to get work. It'll have the links to relevant emails based on whatever that task is. Because I don't think we're that far from that. Like, I think we're six six months max from that capability. You can, I mean, you can do some of that now. So I've been doing it from even GPT-3. I used to do this uh, before there was the voice stuff, but you can actually tell it to, you can communicate with it and then tell it to generate it in a .ics file. So if you're like, if you're done, you're like, I need to do this. I need to call my mom. I need to do whatever at noon. You can talk with GPT and then say, can I have all of this in a .ics file? And it'll actually generate the code for you and give you a link. So when you come to your computer, you can click on it and it'll actually add all of those events to to your uh your google oh, oh yeah yeah wait so you can set those links to add multiple events yeah yeah so an, an ics file a dot ics file is just pretty much a block of code that is a calendar file and so that block of code you can even have it show you what it looks like in gpt and it'll generate a code block what an oh ics God. file looks like. Wait, can, you, can you click on that on your phone? Like if you get ChatGPT to generate that file, if you click on it, can you add it to your calendar on your phone? Yeah, yeah. I actually made a custom GPT that does this. So I like I like gave it all of the um I gave it all the information on what an ICS file is and things like that. And I have a custom GPT that I just go to and I hit that, I talk to it, and then I can make my events and schedule. So you've it. already built you already built what I was just talking about. And that's the cool thing with this. Like there's so many different learn ways that people learn. And I think that at least in American society, like we're taught, we go to like our, I went to just like a public school and it was like, I was a super creative person. If you haven't noticed in this weird fucking chat we did, but like I was super creative that they actually put me in special ed. I was in special education with people that had special needs because they didn't know how to like cater to my way of creatively thinking. Mm -hmm. But I think now with this new technology with AI is there's, we're going to at least like have tests to understand what type of thinker you are. Are you a visual learner? Are you an audio learner? Are you all of the above? And the education, whatever, whatever the subject will be, can be fed to everyone in their own way of learning. So we could have a class of 50 students, whatever, that maybe the visual learners are getting the more visual side of it. The, the textbook learners are getting the more of that. Like, I don't, I, I'm seeing a future of where education will actually change and be a la carte for every t individual person. This is a, a three hour conversation in and of itself. Yeah. Uh, education. Very passionate about it. Uh, but I do want to spend the last part on music. Can you like concisely explain where we are with AI music? Like the edge of music capabilities, where are we? And like, what tools do you use to get there? Yeah. So we're at a spot where I didn't even think we would be like, it, it was like for visual references, like the whole Will Smith video with the pasta and then all of a sudden Sora drops and you're like, what? And so that was kind of the same thing. Like when I first started working with Suno, uh, I don't even know, like it was, it was months ago, half a year ago, they, all they were, were just, you could type in a prompt and it would just generate text. So it was just like 11 labs. It was like a text to audio only like just voice. And then all of a sudden they started showing me what they were doing. Like, Hey, we can generate music now. And it sounded very distorted and like early MP3s is very gritty. 
And then all of a sudden version two came out, version three, which they just dropped last Thursday. The cool thing about Suno is you can you can prompt, you could just say like a, a country song about doing a podcast with Riley, whatever, and it would do a country song instantly. But there's also a custom mode that's in there now where you can actually type your own lyrics in and you can also pick genres. And the cool thing with how data sets are made and everything like AI, with AI and with mid journey, I'm sure you've done this, but you can like start to like mesh things together. Things that were never created before are starting to get created. So you can put in music genres that have never happened, like a EDM country, whatever, like, and it'll start to generate music based on what it knows. So currently in February 28th, 2024, we're in a very, like very crazy spot of AI generated music. It's still a little distorted. It's still not like you're going to have a pop star today, but it's very, very close. I, I commend anyone to go there and try it. The other tools I'll suggest is there's a company called Soundful, uh, and they've actually been doing AI music for a while and they do it a little bit differently. So the way that Suno is, is it's more diffusion based. It's kind of like how mid journey is for images, but how Soundful works is it uses actually sound samples. So it actually uses the actual sounds that we use as music producers. And it kind of, it constructs a song as a music producer would using AI and using algorithms. So every time you hit generate, it's different but it's using similar sounds that we would select when we're creating music or synth presets, things like that. That's the other one I use. Uh, oh, I don't know, maybe some soundful. Okay. Would you suggest starting with something like Suno over Soundful just because it's easier to just tap into right away? Um, if you're more advanced, maybe do Soundful. Is that what I'm hearing? Actually, they're both pretty easy. You can kind okay. of, uh, Soundful works like with, by clicking things. Like you can be like, okay, I want to trap this, this, and like kind of, it, it is a little more advanced, yes. So Suno, if you don't even know how to make music, I would suggest using that because you can make amazing music for just putting a prompt in. It's just like, if you don't know how to do digital art, you can go to Mid Journey and type a prompt in and you can create digital art. Suno is the equivalent of that. And then, yeah, maybe like the next tier about how like uh, Photoshop has AI built into it. That's kind of what Soundful is in a way. Like you might, you kind of need to know what song, the key, or the, key the song is gonna be in, what uh, genres are, things like that. Soundful is like the next tier, is what I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let's go to go to these companies. Yeah, so Replay is the app that I built, and that is that's if you want to do voice to voice. Uh, you can also do text to voice as well with it now. But it's if you let's say you are a little more advanced and you are a songwriter or a, or a singer or whatever. Me, I have a male voice. I'm not the best singer, but I can I can use Replay, the app that we built, to have a female vocalist on my song. So I can I can write lyrics, I can sing. It'll actually like, sound like a female vocalist. The other thing that is cool that we did with this is expanding what we can do with AI. Let's say you wanted uh, a model made, if you want a, a song of half Notorious B.I.G., half Drake, you can actually do that with with replay. You can blend. I, have, I, I saw that you did that. I haven't tried it yet. So yeah. you can create like a blend between Drake and 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 yeah. Kanye's voice, for example. Yeah. And you can do uh, up to five models, and each of them is a percentage. So it's just mm -hmm. like sliders. So you can actually slide things together and wow. create new avatars, which is kind of cool for all of the creators out there doing content creation. And maybe they're even in a faceless channel. They could do it, so they could actually have a voice for their channel that's made out of people they like. A little bit of Ariana Grande, Drake whatever and then you can make your own vocal fingerprint now your own avatar vocal avatar with our tool dude dude that's awesome and and by the way if you don't want to uh sing a song at all you can use suno and then plug it directly into replay uh, yes. which is something that i i'm actually working on a little project right now suno is about 80 to 90 percent there in terms of like enunciation of the words i notice when i try and split songs on replay with like real songs the vo um there the vocals have this like sharpness to them so that it's it sounds better when it goes through replay suno yeah. doesn't quite sound the best when it goes through replay at this point because i suno's words aren't quite as sharp and i i don't know if i'm using the right vocab but that's kind of how i see yeah, it yeah you yeah. Know. and and that was definitely you were doing that with like suno 2.0 or v2 yeah v3. yeah they have a new version v3 just dropped and it sounds so much better so that that's fixing some of that issue uh and then i have more professional ways i can tell you how to do that there's another ai thing for all the musicians in the chat there's this thing called UVR, it's universal vocal remover. And those algorithms we actually have in replay that do the splitting, but there's a more of a professional one that's free on GitHub. Uh, 
that will actually split the vocals even better. So to what you were saying, it doesn't really do it well in replay. We're only using one of those algorithms when we do the vocal separation, but this tool, Universal Vocal Remover, can use tons of algorithms together. So it actually gets a better split of the instrumental and the acapella. If you guys want to like ask me any questions, I respond to my DMs. I put it up there earlier, but it's uh, Flostradamus is my Instagram. Shoot me DMs. I love talking nerd stuff, as you guys can tell. And hopefully we can all do something cool together, build the future. Thank Get you, guys. Keep, yeah. in, keep educating. Keep being creative. Will do. Will do. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll talk soon. We're going to do some creative stuff together. I know it. I love it. Let's get it.